But twenty years in the Legion will make a boy a man. Twenty years in the Legion and they will give you land. Twenty years in the Legion you'll always have a home. Twenty years in the Legions of Rome. <laughs> Evening Meridiers. Welcome to How Shit Works, the show where we look behind the curtain of how the big time meridiers. As always, I am one of your guests, Raphael. I'm a knight pelican and a royal peer and a holder of a whole bunch of opinions. As always, I am jo joined by my co-host, the Knight of Kittens. The bringer of joy, Sir Eric Martell. Evening, everyone. That's right. I am Sir Eric Martell, the knight of kittens, the bringer of joy. I'm a territorial baron and a knight, believe it or not. And I have... A proto pelican. And a proto pelican, which sounds even more disturbing than an actual pelican. <laughs> Just as importantly, I also have a lot. Of opinion. So, hey, Eric, before we get into introducing our, our guest tonight, which I'm really looking forward to, um, our audience who may be out there or may you know have forgotten about us uh, may be curious as to where we've been for the last month and a half. Um, so I thought I'd give us, we'd give a quick update on what's going on in our lives, uh, what's, what's been going on. Uh, we took a little break. Uh, we had a lot of life going on. Uh, things were kind of opening back up before, you know, things started to get weird again. Um, but things were kind of opening up. Um, uh, Katerina and I have, have bought a house. As you can tell, my background is a little different. Things aren't right. This isn't big enough that it, as, as it's supposed to be. So th changes we made. Um, so we're working on that. We're getting our house on the market. Uh, if you're looking to buy a house and harvest, let, let us know. Um, I'll point you to a, to a listing soon. But other than that, um, you know, we've just been just absolutely covered over with life, but we want to let people know on my part, um, that's what's going on. What's been going on with you, Eric? Well, I went on a trip where I had, or rather where I rediscovered my long forgotten love for tequila sunrises. I I'm told that I have, I had a big time. <laughs> You went to the land of big fun. You went to Odenfeld? Even further south, much bigger fun. There may have been a golden idol on a platform and a, a pontoon boat. I mean, I'm just was saying. There, was there a giant, giant stone that came down after you when you picked up the, the golden idol? I have some gaps in my memory, so it's entirely <laughs> possible. Awesome. Uh, that's great. Well, I'm glad you came back. I believe a couple of years ago, uh, Sir Yastrib uh, contacted me when I was Kingdom Seneschal, and we annexed that portion of uh, the uh, of the world in, in Jumeridiers. Not officially, of course. Um, we just want to let the, the populace know that um, Houndstag isn't going away. Uh, we'll probably do a couple of shows a month as things go, uh, as we start back up, and we'll adjust it as it's needed uh, and as we find things to, to talk about and discover. Uh, I didn't cover that with any of our crew or Eric, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Now that we've <laughs> completely already gone off script, and that counts, we'll get back in the swing of things. And tonight is the second episode of our seventh series, which again completely mystifies me, but I realize the depth of your boredom as we sort of surf through the pandemic. This week, your first event is it's going to be it's your first event that is in parentheses with Her Excellency, Her Ladyship, Ayla Thousand Oars, who just popped back on the screen. Woo! -hoo! Ayla, this is where you introduce yourself. Say whatever you want. I'm muted. There we go. I'm unmuted now. All right. So I'm Ayla Hundred Oars. Uh, not quite to a thousand just yet working on it. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, I've been in the SCA for like 12 years now. Newcomers are one of my passions. Newcomers. Newcomers. Um, and so... <laughs> 
I'm excited to be here tonight to talk about your first event. Um, in my mundane life, I'm a teacher, so I really enjoy talking to people and answering questions because I get asked about a thousand a day. So I can't wait to hear what people are interested in tonight. Awesome. I really like the idea of a thousand hours personally. We'll, we'll get we'll let you explain that in a little bit. Um, by the way, I heard you say newcomers and newcomers and newcomers, but we haven't gotten to the portion where we actually talk about that yet. Thanks for joining us. Here's that portion. <laughs> All right. So welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us as always. Uh, tonight's words for the drinking game provided by Baroness Ayla, our newcomer, and provided by myself. Um, we have at one of my first events, anytime you, you hear us say that, or you hear us say, sorry, Jess, we're going to go off script. Um, then you should take your handy adult beverage, which mine is margaritas, by the way. Um, and you should turn that up and drink. If you want to, and it's completely an opt-in game, you do not have to participate if you don't want to. If you want to participate but don't want to drink alcohol, feel free to drink whatever kind of pop, soda, tea, water, uh, whatever you want. Milk, I, doesn't matter to me. Have fun, enjoy, play along if you want to. As always, we'd like to thank Between Two Peers for allowing us to be a licensed franchisee of their drinking game. And for the first official, I'm going to go off script. I'm going to go off script. So I learned, I believe earlier or last week, that uh, Between Two Peers is done. They are not going to bring the show back. So I would like to take a moment to uh, thank uh, Duchess Helga and Baroness Tulia. Uh, that would be Sir Danger Muppet and Mistress Sassy Seamstress for a full year of bringing joy to the hearts, uh, to the hearts and ears of many people throughout the SCA uh, and thank them for being good, solid, upstanding. And I can't believe somewhere Helga's laughing at me calling her upstanding uh, members of the SCA. And I, I deeply appreciate uh, the influence they had and the, the effort that they put forth in making the pandemic a little easier to get through. Yeah. All right. With all that seriousness out of the way, um, a quick note, we want to thank the audience for following, uh, following along and popping in and joining us and being here for all of this. Um, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the, in the chat. The wonderful, amazing question goddess, Graf and Katarina, will collect them all. And then at the end of the show, she will bombard us with them and we will answer as many as we can before the show ends. And if we can't get to them, perhaps we'll get to them in the after show on the Zoom, which will come up for a half an hour immediately following the show. All right, so let's get this party started and get to know Her Excellency. How and when did you first find the SCA? So um, my husband, Gwydion, and I uh, were newlyweds um, living in Tuscaloosa, uh, going to the University of Alabama, so Roll Tide for those of you out there. And uh, we'd been doing Renaissance festivals. Roll Tide. <laughs> we'd been doing Renaissance festivals for a couple of years, both of us had always been interested in fantasy and science fiction. And we had heard rumblings at Renaissance festivals of this thing called the SCA. And we were sort of getting to the limits of our involvement in the Renaissance festivals because they're much more of a sort of observational sport than a participatory sport. Um, and we were like, let's, let's see if we can find that thing, that SCA thing that we keep hearing about that, that people say is like way more in depth than the Renaissance festivals. So we got online and just did a quick Google search and lo and behold, there was a Shire right there in Tuscaloosa. So we found their meeting information online and we rolled up to our first meeting on April Fool's Day, 2009. And uh, it's been fun ever since. So That's super cool. April I am Fool's curious. Day, at, no joke. April Fool's Day. Yep. Yep. Makes so much more sense now. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm a big joke so, that the universe is playing on you. I'm going to say right quick, I'm going to say two things. So I'm already going off script again. 
first, <laughs> if, if, if this is a joke that the universe, is, the universe is playing on me, it's one of the happiest jokes of my life because I love you and your, your husband both dearly. Um, and the second part is you imply that you, you talked about the, the Renaissance Fair being mostly observational. Are you implying that, implying that the SCA is also is not observational? Because I would challenge that. It's observational. Assertion. It's observational in a different way. There was we had gotten to the point where our level of involvement in the Renaissance festivals couldn't go any farther unless we became cast. And that was just something that we didn't have the time for was was being cast at the Renaissance festivals. And so the idea of being able to be part of the magic in the SCA in a way that we couldn't be part of the magic at the Renaissance festivals was really appealing to us. We wanted to participate and do the things, do the fun things that people were doing and that we were hearing about. That's an excellent answer. But I really like the observational part side of things. Oh yeah. I, mean, I love to people watch and I, I love to just watch things too. But if there's ever a moment when like, I want to stop watching and do, then all I have to do is walk up to somebody who's doing the thing and say, Hey, I want to do that thing. And then suddenly I'm doing the thing and there's not like a big, I have to try out for cast and you know, it, it's, I can do whatever I want to do in the SCA. And that's something that I love about it. You had something, Eric? I just wanted to say that I think it's wonderful that you found the SCA on Fred and George Weasley's birthday. <laughs> and I think it's very indicative of particularly Gwyd and his SCA career. And I'd like you to remind him later tonight that he should attend Sable Sword meetings more regularly. <laughs> okay. And that's all I have to say about that. All right. So now we're actually going to get back on script. Um, so, there's a hint about uh, your love of all things ships, and we'll discuss that later. But other than ships, what is the hook in the SCA that keeps you coming back? What's the thing that, that brings you your joy? There are so many things, individual things that I love, um, singing, dancing, running lists, those kind of things. But if I had to sort of bring it all into one thing that I really love about the SCA, um, it's the relationships that I have with people. And that has been such a powerful thing. Um, a lot of people don't know that uh, Gwyd and I actually seriously considered moving across the country when we first graduated um, from college. We were feeling restless, um, newlyweds. We kind of wanted to try some new things. We'd been doing the SCA for a little while at that point, a couple years. And we were, we were seriously considered just picking up and moving um, halfway across the country. And our family thought we were nuts. They were like, what are you like? What do you do? You don't know anybody. You don't ha know anything. And so I can remember explaining to my mom, mom, I don't, I don't have to know anybody. All I have to do is go find my local SCA group there and be like, hi, I'm Ayla. I'm from Meridies. Here are the things that I love to do. And I'm going to instantly have family and connections. And the best comparison, the best analogy I can make is if anybody out there has a really strong church family, um, it's a it's a very similar sort of you have those people that they don't even have to know you and they're going to help you. Um, and I've seen that at work in my entire time in the SCA. So I knew that we were going to be able to land wherever we wanted to and have friends immediately. Well, that's fantastic. So. I'm going to go like we were talking, still talking about your early years in, in the society. Um, we all had that one person who sort of helped ease us in and who sort of showed us the ropes. And so who was the biggest influence in your early SCA years? So at that first, uh, that first business meeting that we showed up to on um, April Fool's Day, um, uh, Sven and Halbera were um, 
sort of key members of the group and they had actually just gotten married, but like not had their like wedding reception party yet. And so we roll up, they have never seen us before in their lives. And we're like, Hey, we're new. And at the end of the business meeting, they're like, Hey, we have our like wedding reception coming up tomorrow. If you want to come like to our wedding reception and we'll introduce you to some more people. Um, and so right away from the very beginning, um, Sven and Halbera, sort of took us under their wing. Um, he had been in the SCA for quite some time and she uh, w- had not been in as long as he had, but she was no newcomer. Um, she'd been in for a while. And so they they really embraced us and, um, and, and helped us right away feel at home and feel like we were part of a family. Like it, it felt like family more than anything. So, so yeah, definitely Sven and Halbera. You busted a newcomer in there, so you owe me one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I owe you. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. You don't have to stop in the in, in the middle. You can just yeah. go on and get. We'll catch up at the end. Oh, and All actually, right. I should point out what I'm actually wearing tonight. You can't see much of it, um, but for my very first event, I had Renaissance Festival clothes, but I didn't really like. I had heard that that was kind of not a thing that you did, which I think we're going to allude to more later, but. Yeah. Um, to, to make me feel more comfortable, um, Halbera actually made this dress for me. So the dress that I'm wearing tonight is actually my very first piece of SCA garb ever that um, Halbera made for me so that I would feel comfortable that I had something to wear to go to my first event. So Very nice. That's pretty swank just to get the, you got the standard Meridian s- stitching on the top. Yeah, I know. Right. The like blanket yeah. stitch there. There you go. See, right. Mm-hmm. See, look at me busting out that knowledge of stitches. <laughs> More than <laughs> I knew at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first off, I want to say right quick that absolutely the, you alluded to earlier, the, the concept of being able to move anywhere in the SCA and have an instant in with someone, someone or some group local is super handy and uh it's it's a it's a network of people that that i sometimes think we take for granted Mm -hmm. so that was really a really cool portion of your story all right so this is a a bit of a uh sometimes of an iffy question because you know heroes are, are dangerous things to have um but do you have an sca hero and if you do who are they and why I mean, everybody knows that um, I love Richard Wolfwood because, you know, he has the fear Draca and that is my one true love in the SCA. Um, But I I gave some thought to this question and I think the real answer is that I have so many that we don't have time for me to fully address that question. But I would say that something that those people that come to mind when I'm thinking of who are my heroes in the SCA, something that they do, so something that a hero in the SCA does for me, um, is they kind of fly under the radar. And what I mean by that is some of my favorite people, you know, they may be peers, they may have positions of high importance, but they do other things quietly just because it's the fun thing to do and you know the the moments that i cherish the most with those people are when we're doing things behind the scenes when you know somebody who may be a fantastic um uh fiber arts person um is doing something cool under a day shade they're not teaching a class or anything but they're doing the thing that they love And I go look at that thing that they're doing that they love. And I say, hey, that's cool. And they immediately put it in my hands and say, here, you try. So I think those people that not only are sort of flying under the radar, but are so willing to give of themselves in a way that's not official. You know, that person probably taught that same class earlier in the day. And I didn't even know that embroidery looked cool. So I didn't go take the embroidery class. But now they're like embroidering under the day shade. And suddenly that looks cool. And they're willing to give some time to me and show me this thing that is, you know, in in a way that's quiet and unobtrusive and not official, and they're not getting any kind of recognition for.
So, do you have a favorite event? Is it MGT? If not, why is it MGT? Uh, so this is a joke, folks. She, but I, I, I wanted to go into it and not just skip over it because Ayla has been the list mistress for multiple MGTs and done a fantastic job. And that is a job that does not get it enough appreciation. And some people in the SCA so don't appreciate it that they're kind of jerks during the tournament and they need to cut it out and don't let it happen again. And those of you who were there know exactly who I'm talking to. And I mean it. Don't get Eric mad at you. It doesn't go well when Eric's mad at you. No. Don't make him angry. So I like when he's angry. So here's how I get around having two favorite events. Uh, MGT is my favorite weekend event. And uh, so I'll talk about my favorite weekend event because I think Ulrich's going to ask me uh, a, a different question here. So I'm, I'm being sneaky here. So MGT is my favorite weekend event. Um, and it, I love it for some of the same reasons that I was talking about, you know, my SCA heroes. There are so many people doing so many things quietly and without recognition at MGT to make that event happen. So the behind the scenes thing and like how many things are going on is really cool. But also it goes back to that idea of the relationships that I was talking about earlier. And MGT is an event unlike any other in the sense that we all come together for a singular purpose. And that is to create this, not just a magical moment, but a magical day. We create a magical day at MGT where it is all about pageantry and chivalry and service and unity and those ideals that we hold dear in the SCA. And I think that MGT is the epitome of the SCA ideals. And there's something for everybody there. Yes, it's a tournament focused event, but you get all kinds of those opportunities like I was talking about where it's not the formal class that's going on, but somebody is embroidering while they watch the tournaments or somebody has their ankle loom there under a day shade while they're doing tournaments or people are telling stories under the day shades about, hey, you remember that one time when so but somebody did such and such or whatever. Lots of no shit there I was stories at MGT. Um, and so that it, there's just something for everybody at MGT. It's a really magical event crammed into really and truly a single day, even though it's a weekend event. Absolutely. The level of uh, the level of uh What's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, Noble Fellowship is amazing at MGT. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, a sight, to be see, sight to see. And thank you very much for calling it your favorite weekend event. But I know, I know, I know you love MGT, but your heart, my dear, belongs to Lily's. Yes. All right, so, I got to go back because I, I had a thought too about MGT because we're talking about newcomers. MGT was my fourth event. And uh, it was at Camp Discovery, which if anybody has an opportunity, if you see you newcomers, if you see that MGT is being held at Camp Discovery, that's an unmissable event. That's like no matter what you have to drop to go to MGT at Camp Discovery, um, you should go. And and for, for my fourth of, or it may have been my fifth event. I don't know. It was really early on. MGT was one of my very, very early at one of my first events. Is that one of our keywords there? At one of my first events. MGT. At one of my first events yeah. involves a story, but yeah, sure. Yeah. Unless you have a story, do you have a story from your, your, at one of my first events in GT? Uh, well, it's kind of, I, have, I have a couple stories about um, one of my first MGTs. I mean, so so many things happened. So um, I have I, I think I think we were going to talk about negative experiences early on in the SCA. And I have a negative experience early on from an MGT, which does not even color it being my favorite event. So we can always wrap back around to that later if you want to avoid going off script. Um, That's sure. Up to you. <laughs> This is your show. We're we're just here to here to push the the conversation along. We'll we'll follow you wherever you want to go. Let's come back to it because we're talking about magical moments right now. Let's, right. let's keep talking about the magic. And, sure. And come right. to the more difficult. So we're going to talk about magic, and we're going to talk about you. 
and we're going to talk about that means we're going to talk about lilies yes which means i would like to know how you got the name hundred oars or thousand doors, as the case may be. It may be a goal. You know, I, I, don't think I'm, I don't think I'm there yet. Like, I think I've got like a bunch of years before I can get to the, I, the fear biffer is going to help. But but I think I don't have a thousand oars on the fear draca just yet. So Okay. Well, tell us how you get the name hundred doors and tell us about your, your love of all things fear draca. Yes. And fear biffer. Right. Yes, and the fear biffer. We'll get there too. So, um, so Ulrich is actually responsible. I love how, you, how excited you got right when I said that. By the way, your eyes lit up, your smile went up. <laughs> yeah. So Ulrich is partly responsible, uh, largely responsible, um, between he and um, Duke Thomas, uh, responsible for getting uh, Gwyd and I to our first lilies. Um, we had just moved. I had just taken a new job, um, and. Uh, you guys offered like, just come, we're going to take care of most of the stuff. You know, you can be, um, I think Thomas was Prince or King at the time. I don't remember which be, be our entourage. That was the excuse. People always do give excuses to do nice things for you. So that was the excuse that he gave to like, let us drive his vehicle and him bring most of the stuff and pay for a lot of the things. Cause we were broke. Um, so that was the excuse to bring us along to Lily's. And I had heard about the ship at Lily's, the fear Draca. And I had seen, um, Thomas's pictures, Elisanda's pictures, from when they had gone out to a previous Lily's. And so I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. So when we very first got there, we had the benefit of camping um, with a wonderful group of people uh, right on the point. Shout out to, to Gottfried and Bridget here um, who host us at Lily's. Um, and so we rolled up and it, the, the ship was about to go out. And so Gwyd was working on like unloading and, and putting the, um, putting the tent up and getting things ready. And they blew the horn to go out on the fear Draca. And I was like, I'm getting on the boat. And there, I was like, are you coming with me? And he was like, no, we got to like set up and stuff. And I was like, that's fine. I'm getting on the boat. <laughs> are you going with me? And so nobody else went. So I just like, wandered down to the shore by myself and just like climbed on the boat. I didn't know a soul on the boat, but I was on the boat. And so I'm on the boat and we're working out of getting, uh, working on getting out of port. And I promptly got cracked in the head with an oar. I don't know if you know that story at all, Ulrich, but um, not. there was some guy trying to help. So sometimes the, um, where they park the fear Draca is muddy. And so the more people that you pile in, the more she kind of sinks into the mud. So sometimes instead of just being able to row out of port, um, you have to kind of gondola style, like pull yourself out of port. And so there was a guy trying to help with that, with one of the oars. And uh, he was pulling very vigorously and lost track of the whole thing that they tell you every time you go like river rafting or kayaking, whatever about like keeping a hand on the end of your paddle. So you don't crack somebody in the head and he cracked me in the head. And so, um, I later found out that there were some very, you know, like famous people from Calentier on the boat. And so like, apparently I've got like a couple Dukes, like giving me first aid and making sure I can count like the number of fingers that I'm holding up. And they have no clue who I am because I'm at like, maybe my, I don't know, like 10th event ever. So nobody there knows me. Um, and so like, I'm fine, whatever. Like, I don't care. I've been cracked in the head. I'm not concussed or maybe I am. So um, Richard joked years later, he was like, the first thing I thought was, oh no, they've hit the hot girl in the head and she'll never get on the boat again. <laughs> so I like to joke that it uh, knocked a love of the fear Draca into me instead of out of me. So for the, for the record, I just heard that in his voice. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I went out 
tons of times that first event. I don't remember my account anymore. So I've always kept a count. So that's how I've gotten my name. So that was sort of the original question that I've meandered around a bit um, is how I got the name Ayla Hundredors. So uh, I had just kind of not intentionally or anything, just been keeping a running count of how many times I had gone out on the boat. And so either my fourth or fifth year um, at Lily's, I can't even remember that now. I was, I think, 33 trips away from um, having 100 trips on the Fear Draca. And to give perspective, uh, Lily's is only nine days long. And the first day, usually there's one trip on the Fear Draca because we bring it over. And then the last day, usually everybody's gone. And then there's maybe one trip on the Fear Draca to take it back. So I got this crazy idea in my head that I was going to try to make it to 100 trips. Um, and so we killed ourselves. There were days that we went out like seven, nine times on the boat because there was bad weather that year. Um, but we made it. We made it out 30 or I made it out 33 times. Not everybody in our little group of friends did, but um, word spread. And there were some people from the Outlands that were helping me like I, you know, needed enough crew together to go out. And uh, so we made it out enough times for me to get uh, my hundred trips. And so then um, Richard asked me to run the Royal Fireworks cruise that night to captain the Royal Fireworks cruise. And um, at the time, Lady was the only title I had. Um, and so I told him, I was like, I'm a little afraid, like, it's going to be me, Lady Ayla, and a boat full of royals. I'm, I'm kind of afraid nobody will listen to me. And uh, he was like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And so uh, he introduced me to the royals as their captain as... Ayla Hundred Oars. And I didn't have a surname at the time. And I was like, well, now I have a surname because I am definitely taking that because that is cool as shit. So, <laughs> like, that's how I got the name Ayla Hundred Oars. So, thanks. A, thanks, Richard. That is a super story, especially the, the way at the end. And as, as anyone can tell you anywhere, Captain mm -hmm. is the highest rank on the sea. I mean, there's Admiral, but that's a whole different thing on the ship. Right. Captain's the highest rank. Yep. And it ended up being fine. Like, it turns out royals are just people and they were there to have fun. And I was their ticket to have fun. So they were all about doing whatever I said so that we could have some fun. So uh, another good uh, early SCA lesson is that royals are just people, too, and they want to have fun just like the rest of us. There you go. Royals just want to have fun. That's got to be a filk somewhere. Uh, yep, yep. Hey, Martel, that could be your uh, fundraiser filk. Oh no, he, he he's doing. I'm too sexy. <laughs> right, Ulrich is invested in this. All right, all right. Like he's he's committed. But yeah, I could hear Royals just want to have fun in my head already. I was just like, oh wow. Well. <laughs> so now we're gonna go back to first event. What about your first events sticks out in your mind now? And what was your first event? So our first event, so I already said, you know, uh, April Fool's Day was our first business meeting. Um, but we didn't actually go to our first event. I can't remember if it was, sec I think it was October of that same year. So like we played for like six months just at a local level. We had never actually gone to an event. We did a couple demos with our local Shire, Shire Vote Born Keep. Um, but we were a little intimidated by our first event because um, I think it does kind of get built up, which is I'm glad we're having this show. So um, Tavern Brawl was coming up. And it was, uh, oh, yeah, Ulrich knows what story is about to get told. Um, so Tavern Brawl was coming up and it was relatively local. And so Spin and Halbera, our sort of SCA mentors, uh, local early influences, um, said, you're going to this event. Like, it's done. Wait, hold on, it's not time out, time out. Local, from Tuscaloosa, Tavern Brawl is like a four-hour drive. 
I, I mean, guess. Okay. I'm, okay. Yes. I'm, All right. I, I guess I'm thinking local to me now, but, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that's fair. I mean, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Yes. So, well, but, but, um, so this is a commitment. Right. This would have been at like Circle YI or something. Yeah. 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 I don't remember. It's a site that I've only ever been to for that event. Yeah. Um, but it, I think Gladenfeld was maybe doing it. And so, um, spends a uh, night was with that group and so they knew a bunch of people up there they knew they had people to introduce us to up there so um Sven and Halbera said you're coming like it was not like hey why don't you it was it was it was an edict you're coming to Tavern Brawl and uh, at least that's how I remember it Sven might tell it a different way but uh so they told us that um bring toiletries and a pillow and you're coming to the event. And so that's literally like all we packed um, other than like uh, shoes, comfortable shoes, bring comfortable shoes, toiletries and a pillow. And so they piled us up in the car with them. They had loner garb for us. Um, they took care of our event fee that first time. Um, they took care of getting us a cabin, just the four of us. There were some very small cabins at that event. Um, and so they took us to Tavern Brawl. And so I spent most of the day like just kind of watching because I, it was all very new still and I hadn't really found my footing. Gwyd was already fighting. Um, and so he had his authorization fight um, at Tavern Brawl. And uh, that night at Tavern Brawl is actually the first Bardic that I ever participated in. So um, that was really fun. Halbera was like, we should go listen. We should go listen to the singing. And it was a very small, intimate, um, maybe only eight or ten people at the little Bardic. Um, there wasn't even a, a fire. We were just like sitting around some picnic tables under a pavilion. And uh, so it was small enough and intimate enough that I decided to sing something. And all I knew were like two songs from going to the Renaissance Festival. So I knew like two Renaissance Festival songs. And so I sang a couple songs and then people started throwing music at me being like, learn this one next and learn this one next. And so that, that event is how I got uh, into Bardic actually. That's, uh, that's really cool. And having heard you sing, I understand why. Um, Maybe we'll talk you into singing on the after show. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, cool. well, I should uh, well, not be drinking something with uh, milk in it. <laughs> well, or maybe you should drink more. Mm. Um, so Tavern Brawl is one of my favorite events. It's it's uh, hosted by Rising Stone, uh, which is, is it Rising Stone? Right, ne right, right next to Gladenfeld. Um, that really does sound like thought like that was at uh, Circle YI. Probably one of the last times we used that site. It was a lovely site. Um, I think that I believe that's the site where uh, Gwyd gets the story of the power shot. Yes, it is. So if, if you've not had a chance to catch Gwyd somewhere and pin him down, have him tell you the story of the power shot. It's worth hearing. And uh, also on, the first time he nails. ever fought uh, Duke Gareth too. Yes. <laughs> that's a good one. Both it's excellent stories. Brawl. Both excellent stories. So that's a good, you know, your first Bardic is a, is a good memory from it. So knowing where this is going to go, um, so what do you remember about that same event that wasn't so great? Well, <laughs> we met lots of people and those lots of people seemed really cool. And we added those people <laughs> on Facebook and they rejected <laughs> our friend requests. Or, or you left it sitting in the queue. So this is a whole like long-standing um, joke between Ulrich and I that um, he was one of the very first people that we ever met in the SCA. We met him um, at that tavern brawl, and he was one of the people that we talked to enough to know his name, which you know at your first event that can be really overwhelming and and learning some names. And actually, Laylee, yeah, your squire mm -hmm. Laylee is one yeah. of the other people that I remember meeting. Um, she was the first female fighter I had ever seen. Um, and so, uh, 
Yes. So we attempted to add a bunch of people on Facebook and lots of people accepted our friend requests. Um, but someone did not until a few events later. I'll let First him dig off, himself out of that hole. <laughs> I've been trying to dig, out, dig myself out of that hole for what, 11, 12 years now. <laughs> I am not. If I have not succeeded by now, I'm not going to succeed. I will st stand by the fact that I get a lot of friend requests and I don't <laughs> always see them. Um, but once I once I realized, because I believe the next uh, the next time I saw you, I believe you guys were like, "Hey, are you guys are you are you never going to accept our friend request?" I'm like, "You sent me a friend request." I'm like, "I believe I went on my phone right there and accepted and found and accepted your friend request." Um, but you're safe in that you. You got Laylee to, to befriend you because she's much nicer than I am. <laughs> so aside from choosing people with good social media etiquette, what are the other things that you need to consider when you're picking your first event? And what would say be the difference between a day trip or a weekend event? Okay. Well, you've asked me like three questions there all in one. Okay. So picking your first event, let's start there. Picking your first event. Um, for me, I think a good rule of thumb is pick something that's kind of nearby um, and pick something where maybe you know somebody who's going. So that whole like we put you in the car and you're going with us and you have no option thing is something that Gwid and I have actually tried to carry forward whenever we um, have newcomers come to Shires and as we've become financially more able to do that. Um, piling people in and saying like, hey, you know, your first event's on us. Here's all the loaner stuff you need. So if you can find somebody local that's going, like automatically, hooray, great event. Find somebody local to you that's going and find an event that's relatively close by, I guess, or, or four hours away, whatever. It doesn't matter if you're going with, with friends, you know, it's fine. Um but that can help finding something that's that's close by and that somebody that you know um, is going. I think it can be kind of intimidating to try to go. Like I said, I mean, it took us like six months and I'm pretty outgoing. Gwid's pretty outgoing. So I think it surprises people that we were a little intimidated to go um, to our first event. Uh, in terms of the difference between day trip and weekend event, day trip means you're literally going to arrive in the morning and head back home that afternoon. Um, whereas a weekend event is going to have the option for either camping or cabining or some other accommodations um, on site. And so it ranges from getting there as early as like a Thursday or Friday, and then usually departing on Sunday morning. So staying overnight on site, which is a little, requires a little bit more things like toiletries and a pillow and that kind of thing. So maybe a blanket or a sleeping bag, right? Depending on what the site has to offer, which a lot of times is nothing. A lot of times you need to bring your bedding with you. So sure. So I'm going to go off script. Sorry, Jess. Um, so we've talked a little bit about your first event. Why don't, why don't we get, Eric, how long was it from, from your first introduction to the SCA to your first event? And what was your first event? Okay. This is going to sound really bad, but I don't really remember what my first <laughs> event was. I had a big time at my first event. So much so that I've sort of lost it. Um, Do you remember where it was? You mean the state? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> was it at Camp Arnold? Because that sounds no. like... Oh. No, no, no. It was not at Camp Arnold. It might have been at a camp in McCalla, Alabama. Maybe. Um. Okay, we I just know I was remember. really blue at the end of the weekend. Like As in the color blue. Def, like no, woad blue? No, woad, woad like. Much woad. Most like of my stuff was blue. blue. No, no, no. It was woad or woad. Um, there was a lot of my stuff was blue. Um, 
it was a thing. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, it was probably not that long. It was probably like a month, month and a half before I went to an event. And then it was probably another month and a half before I recovered to go back to another one. That's awesome. Just, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know where to go with that, man. <laughs> you ask, man. I'm, no, no, that's fair. That's perfectly fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eric shot takes. That's awesome, Jeff. That's <laughs> this is this is why Jessica Bosspray controls our horizontal and our vertical. This is why <laughs> she does that. Oh, um, it's all over. <laughs> um, Go on, all right. My, my my first event was Gulf Wars uh, '99. I've been in the SCA for a little, a little under a month. Uh, we showed up the day they, like two hours after they closed the war. Uh, that was Gulf Wash, um, and I spent most of my my first event running around in the rain buying armor because I was hooked at my first fighter practice. All right, so on to back on to schedule and on to. To questions, how should you prepare prepare for it, and what are the absolute essential things you should bring to your first event? If you can do that without hiccuping, like I just did. Um. So I think what's essential for everybody uh, is a little different. As a redhead, sunscreen is essential everywhere I go. Um, in the South, sunscreen is essential. Pretty much no matter what your skin tone is, you're going to want some sunscreen. And, you know, we try to have Probably day shade. bug repellent. Yeah. That, I was getting there. Jeez, man. Way to steal my thunder. Um, but, yeah. So so sunscreen, bug repellent, um, anything that you would normally take overnight, you know, medications, whatever. Um the biggest other things that I can remember being told and that I think about when I'm packing for events even now is comfortable shoes, um, a range of like, I need to have something in case it rains and then I need to have something dry to change into. Even if it's like a one day event, I always bring a backup outfit just in case I need something to, to change into. So, um, and then a sense of humor. Uh, that's that's such a huge thing, a, a non-tangible thing, but um, a sense of humor. Don't take yourself too seriously. I think that's part of what kept Gwyd and I from getting involved sooner than we did is that, we, you know, we maybe took ourselves a little too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take anybody else too seriously. I mean, hopefully if you're watching Hound and Stag right now, you know that like you should not take people in the SCA too seriously because we're all here because we're a bunch of nerdy outcasts for the most part who have weird interests and and oh my goodness, we have finally found some other weird folks to hang out and be weird with. And so that willingness to, to sort of let things go and, and not take things too seriously. But yeah, comfortable shoes, sunscreen, bug spray, change of clothes, and then whatever else you would take on an overnight adventure. So... I'm going to bust it in my shot takes for tonight. Among the things that you should take are Gatorade. Even if you aren't worried about hydration. Because people in the SCA are very generous. Very, very, very generous. And some... If you're going to drink, take Gatorade, you save it till the next day. When Water are generous, during Gatorade after. After. Yes. Absolutely. Otherwise, the Gatorade will help you help the people who are being generous and they will not help you. That is correct. And then you end up blue. Anyway, now you're on site. What's the first thing that you have to do and why? So you want to find troll, which 
as you know, I mentioned that mundanely I'm, I'm an English teacher. This is one of those like hold out bits of like SCA slang that I love because troll gets its name from the troll guarding the bridge. And like, you know, you've got to, to deal with the troll before you can enter. And so we call it gate now. So you, you want to find gate. You want to check in basically and, and find out like, okay, here I am. I'm, you know, maybe going to get a cabin or I'm going to set up my tent or whatever. I'm going to register my presence on site. These are the like boring legal liability things. All right. So we're going to go find gate, which a lot of people in the SCA will refer to as troll because of that allusion to the, the troll and, and bridge guarding mythology. So that's always the first thing. Get get signed in, get checked in. Um, gate is going to give you a lot of times a schedule for the day. Uh, they're going to have any kind of important announcements or changes or things that you need to know about site. They're going to warn you about things like, hey, there's an ant hill over there, which in the south, fire ants are a huge problem if any of our newcomers are, are not from around here. So, um, you know, those are the people that know what's going on and Gate's going to help you. And if you're a newcomer at an event, Gate is the best place to start because the people who volunteer for Gate usually are people persons because they're going to be dealing with people all day. And so um, those those people are going to be eager and willing to help you and they're going to be knowledgeable about what's going on. So gate or some people might call it troll is always going to be the first place to start. It's a good place. Also, there's good conversations to be found there. Usually it's close by. Um, Unless you're, unless it's an all camping event, it's usually close by the the hall, so there's some good gathering to be had there too. Yeah. Um. All right. So you're at the event, and you may not know many people. What's the best way to get yourself involved in the activities or find something to do? We're going to assume this is after you've you know you've found where you're staying and set your stuff up. So this is here, here, I'm going to have a hot take and be a little controversial. Go for it. Um, one of the things that we always did with newcomers when we took them to events was we found something for them to do volunteering. Um, and I know that sounds crazy. Like here I am to have fun and you're going to put me to work, but Doing something collaboratively is one of the best sort of lowest stress ways to meet people. I feel like um, a lot of people in the SCA tend to be a little socially awkward, like surprise. Um, so uh, if we have a common task and a common goal, that helps break down some of the awkwardness. So you can just go find something that's happening and watch and um, that's always a fun thing to do. All right. Um, but but I like to try to volunteer um, and, and do something. So if you see somebody doing something, be like, hey, do you need any help with that? Or um, we had a newcomer that she was at her very first event and um, she didn't know anybody. So she came to gate and she talked to us for a minute and then she wandered around for a minute and didn't see anybody she knew and didn't see anything she was interested in watching. So she came back to gate and she was like, hey, can I like sit down here and help or sit down here and chat with you for a little while? And like I said, gate people are usually really friendly and they know what's going on. So she just came and sat with us for a little while and we chatted. We introduced her to people then as they were um, um, trolling in. And we asked her some things about like, oh, okay, well, like, what brought you here? Like, what are you interested in? And um, she was interested in like fiber arts and some other stuff. So when people gated in that we knew did fiber arts, we were like, hey, this is our new person here. She's interested in fiber arts. Do you have anything with you? Can you go show her some stuff? And so we eventually like sent her on our way. Um, with somebody who was interested in the same thing she was interested in and, and she had a friend. So just her coming back to gate because she didn't really know where else to go ended up working out really great for her. Um, 
but yeah, find somebody who's doing something that looks interesting and ask them about it. Even if it's just gate because they're talking to people and you're interested in talking to people. Because everyone in the SCA likes to talk about whatever it is they're doing. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Absolutely. We are oversharers. So now what if you get confused or if per say you just start to feel a little bit overwhelmed by like, for some people, the SEA can have a lot of sensory overload issues uh, with the noise and all the activities that could possibly be going on. Um, who should you go to and what can they do to help? Well, if you can find a chatelaine, um, that's always somebody good, but chatelaines are not great about identifying themselves, unfortunately. Um, chatelaines, for those of you that are new, are that's an office that is designed to help new people. So um, a lot of times they'll have like a gold key on their garb somewhere, but I've been a Chatelaine before and I've been bad and I've never worn a gold key. So find somebody you know, or I would say gate is always a good place to go. If you need help, somebody at gate is going to help you and they can direct you to like a quiet cabin to go sit down in for a little while or direct you to somebody who can get you what you need. And you can always just go ask for, hey, is there a Chatelaine or is there somebody who helps newcomers? Chatelaine can be a weird word to try to remember. Um, at one event, um, something that I tried to... Um, to get started and I, I kind of dropped the ball on and I would love to see us maybe try to get it started again is we had a newcomer liaison for the event and I volunteered. I was like, let's try out this new thing. I have this crazy idea of like, you know, we already have somebody who's in charge of feast and we have somebody who's in charge of making sure that there's toilet paper in the bathrooms and whatever. And wouldn't it be a cool idea if we had somebody whose like whole job was like steer newcomers at this person. And so I put up a little sign at gate that said that had my picture on it and my name and introduced myself. And it said, you know, hey, I'm the newcomer liaison. Come find me and I'll help you. And um, Ulrich, I believe that for that event, you set up your day shade to be the sort of newcomer liaison point. And I think I ended up with like four or five new people at that event that were sitting um, under your day shade. And that worked really well. So to groups out there, to anybody, you know, that's watching that might not be a newcomer and that is working on planning events, um, we did it once and it worked great. So I've got like a, you know, trial one that says that that was a really cool idea um, and we've got people from that that are still interested and involved with the SCA, like two of those newcomers, at least I know for a fact, are still at least tangentially involved um, with the SCA. Uh, so that helped. And I even had a thing about like, if you're new and you want to eat feast, come sit at my table at feast and eat feast with me and I'll explain things. Um, those newcomers came and sat with me at court. So that's something. Um, and then even a year later, somebody accidentally found my name and phone number as the newcomer liaison and called me. And it was like a year after the event was over, but I was still a point of contact for newcomers. And so I was able to direct them to their local group. So that's a really cool thing to have in an event, if, if possible. You bust like four newcomers into that answer. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, I sorry. To that word. So just out of curiosity and slightly off topic, really on topic, but slightly off, off script, slightly. What, who would you contact if by chance you woke up blue at an event? <laughs> well, it depends on how you felt about being blue at the event. <laughs> You know, I mean, that might be a, a time when we need to president at SCA.org, depending on, you know, like how we got blue. Um, 
Uh, but, you know, I, I think that might also be a like outside event, maybe contact your medical professional kind of thing <laughs> if we wake up blue to the event. We if might want to let more than four hours, you should contact a medical right. professional. Might want to let the uh, the event more start. Like, more like four days. Uh, uh, it, I mean, it's, in all seriousness, though, if there's some shenanigans going on at an event, if there's something inappropriate happening at an event, again, Gate's a good place to go and ask for the event steward. And the event steward is the person who is in charge of the event. And if there's something going on that they need to know about, that's the that's the point of contact. And that's the person that will handle any major thing that that might be happening in an event. Absolutely. Event steward and autocrat if something if something actually legally or seriously is uh is going on. If you know shenanigans are fine. Shenanigans that are right. Inappropriate are, is, shenanigans. Uh, inappropriate shenanigans are completely different. Um all right. So the 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 big activities for the day, the attorneys, the classes and all that are over. Is is there a reason that I need to stick around for court? I'm I'm it's my first event. There's nothing nothing for me going to go on there, right? Uh, misconception about court. So, I mean, uh, we watch the Oscars and I'm not going to win an Oscar. Right. Um, so not yet. <laughs> so court is, is the, sh is about the show. Um, and you know, yes, it's about seeing people recognized for the things that they do. So that's that's one of the big purposes of court is court is to recognize people who are working hard. And a lot of times the event staff will be recognized. And then um, and I'm, you know, gearing this mostly toward newcomers here, um, the, the event staff will be recognized. And then people who have been doing cool things will be recognized. So yeah, say I'm new um, or I'm at one of my very first events. Um, I hear, oh, that person is recognized for armored combat. I'm interested in armored combat. Now I suddenly have a face for a person that I might want to go introduce myself to and say, hey, I hear you do the thing. I am also interested in the thing. Let us talk about the thing, right? So seeing people get awards for things is a great way to meet people who might be interested in the same things as you or to just find out that there's stuff out there. Like sometimes I hear awards um, and I still have to go, wait, what's that for? And so you'll find out that people are doing these cool things that you didn't even know about. Um, and then court's also just a show. Um, the the king and queen and um, any barons and baronesses, prince and princess. Sometimes we have visiting crowns from other areas. They're up there to perform. And they are generally mixing the seriousness of recognizing people's hard work with fun and celebration. And so court is just a fun place to be. It's a fun place to, to see people, to meet people, and then also to just watch watch the royals perform and have fun and, and put on a little bit of shtick and show and, and fun. So before we get to the, uh, the next question about feast, I just want to say, though, that... Um, Ayla's absolutely right about court. People will have, um, court can sometimes sound very serious though. And understand that these are just people and people who have done some dumb, dumb things before that we have all laughed at. So when the titles start getting thrown around, remember like there's a royal peer who, who gave us Bart face. So just relax. It's not that big a thing. Now, right. feast, is that a must do at your first event? I would always recommend feast to people, um, but I don't think it's a must do. But if you're there for the experience and you really want to like cram all of the experiencing things that you can into an event, I would absolutely recommend feast. Um it's again another great place to meet people because you're sitting down for a meal. And um, I largely credit SCA feasts. I know like Ulrich's going to laugh because Ulrich is not the biggest fan of a feast in the world. Um, but 
Well, some feasts, some feasts. Ulrich is selective about his feasting. I am, I am, uh, I just kind of like feast in general, but I, I would partially credit feast for turning um, my husband and I into foodies. We both grew up very picky eaters and we're picky eaters even into our early adulthood. Are, are you actually legitimately shocked, Ulrich? Did you not know that about us? I'm, I'm throwing a little side eye at you. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were super picky eaters. Like for a while, my husband growing up, like it was, it was chicken fingers and French fries and mac and cheese. And that was it. There were no other foods. Um, and now I literally can't think of anything that I wouldn't try at least once. And part of that I really do think is because of SCA feasts. I mean, we, um, I can remember one of my early events or my first event, actually, Tavern Brawl. Um, there was a dish and here I am like remembering a feast from forever and ever ago. There was a beef with barley and saffron. I'd never had barley or saffron before. Um, but the great thing about feast is it's not like going to a restaurant and there's a menu and there's all these scary prices out next to it. And so you order what's safe because you're cheap and you're broke and you just want to eat what I know is going to taste good. Feast is I've paid usually a very reasonable amount somewhere, um, anywhere from like seven to ten dollars. And I'm going to get like this four course meal out of it with lots of different things. And so we found ourselves trying things that I would have never ordered in a restaurant. I would have been afraid to try them in a restaurant. But like I said, I remember that that beef with barley and saffron. I remember at another early event having another beef roast that had like four colors of carrots in it. I didn't even know that I liked carrots or that there was any color other than orange for carrots. So like that was okay. Like apparently carrots are amazing and there's like a gajillion different kinds of them. Um, another one of my early events, uh, I had parsnips in a mustard sauce and I was like, okay, like that's kind of like a potato and potatoes are awesome. So parsnips are now awesome. And so I expanded my palate so much and was eating cuisines from different periods in time, different regions of the world. And like I said, I really do credit SCA feasts for making us adventurous eaters. And we branched out from there and, and became more willing to try new things. So I'd like to go on for the record that I love a good feast, but after 20 <laughs> years in the SCA, um, I've had uh, raw chicken served to me enough times um, that I'm a bit, I'm a bit skeptical sometimes of a, a, a feast. Um, so I love a good feast. I do. And, and here we got to go on record too, saying like how difficult a feast crap or a feast steward's Absolutely. job is, right? And the immense amount of pressure, because I've helped in the kitchen before. I've never been a feast crap because that is like, hmm, I'll, I'll teach in front of a bunch of kids, but I am not going to try to like get your food cooked into you on time. But it's a huge pressure job. Absolutely. Um, and the timing is weird. You know, court, that whole talking about it being a, a show and about it being shtick. Um, feast is often right after court. And so the timing is sort of nebulous. And so trying to like, you know, maybe my chicken has to be ready in two hours. Maybe my chicken has to be ready in 30 minutes. I don't know. So, uh, yes, but but don't let a couple bad uh, chicken experiences uh, sully you on feast forever. Oh, no, I, I still go to feast. Even when, even when I don't have to, I still go. I was going to the newcomers. I, absolutely. I, I've had some amazing feasts. And speaking of newcomers, that's two, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some quite some requests of, of, of Sir Eric and I and Hound and Stag in our show uh, to do some newcomer shows. And this is certainly um, qualifies as one of them. But some folks, you know, and very reasonably in their request would like a, would like for them those those shows to be less profane let's say um and that's that's just not us you know, if, if we are who we are uh, our show is what it is 
and we're we're happy with it. Um, if you're if you're new and you'd like to know stuff, we're happy to answer questions. But uh, we're, we're we're just not changing our shows. Not not something that we're we're going to do unless it's a kids show. We will absolutely do a kids show. That's 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 different. We're not gonna. You know, I'm not going to drop f bombs. I'm really going to try hard not to drop an f bomb on a, on a kid's show. Um, but back to feast. Absolutely, I've had some amazing times at feast. I've gone to feast and gone. I can't. I literally can't eat any of this just because the the menu wasn't something something for me. But had an amazing time with the people who were there. Right. Because generally speaking, if you sit down at a table of eight people, someone has an emergency feast kit with them of summer sausages and crackers and things that they could eat. They know or whatever that they know that they can eat. If feast isn't, isn't amazing, but I've had some of the absolute best f- food I've ever had. I've had easily, I've not been to a, a feast in the SCA that was done well. That was easily not a $30 meal that I, you know, at least a $30 meal that I got for six to $10. Right. I mean, I, you just can't, for the, the 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 amount of food that you get, for the quality quality and quantity of food that you get, it's just you know, it's it's easily a bargain, and even even if you can only eat half the food, you still got fifteen dollars worth of food. Oh yeah. For you know for six to for, for six to ten dollars. All right, so my friends, not that I've ever been to one, mind you, but they, but they tell me that. Bardic can be fun. Is that true? Well, I already talked about my experience with Bardic um, at the first event, and I first event. But you have other experiences with Bardic. Is there a specific story I'm supposed to be thinking of? No, no, no. Okay. Doesn't have to be any specific story. All right. So yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever been to a bardic that wasn't fun. But I do have to maybe give the disclaimer that I do have a background in musical theater, so I already love singing. Um, but bardic isn't just singing. Bardic is also storytelling, and some of my favorite bardics that I have ever been to. Um, I think people hear bardic and it sounds very rigid and structured and now this person will sing this and then this person will sing this. And I've been to bardics that are like that, but the overall bardic culture in Meridies that I enjoy so much, our kingdom's culture, is that it's people sitting around the fire and they're tired and the day has been long and we are enjoying camaraderie and someone will sing something and then that's going to inspire somebody to tell a story that that song reminded them of oh there was this one time at this event that this happened and we all laugh and it's usually at somebody's expense that's around the fire so there's a little pointing and laughing that happens um and then somebody else says, ah, oh, somebody, somebody sing that one. And so somebody will sing something else. And then somebody will be like, hey, uh, Ock, tell the single glazed donut story. You should ask for that story if you ever, <laughs> if you ever find yourself at a bardic with Robert Glendon of Ock. Or if you ever find yourself at a bardic and just want to ask, can someone point me at the single glazed donut story? We'll, we'll find him or um, uh, Ulrich here. Who's I'll go get him. Know. Ulrich has a, a story called the service goat story. That is a, as a favorite um, story. Um, so there are just some funny SCA legendary stories of things that have happened. So if singing is not necessarily your thing, um, Bardic is so much more than singing. It's camaraderie. It's hanging out around the fire. Yes, it's singing. And some people sing songs that are happy, but the overwhelming mood usually at a Bardic is going to be some sad songs and some funny stories. So there's a little bit of something for everyone, I would say, at a Bardic. And and even if it's just, I want to sit here and be in the presence of other people who are weird like me, that is a valuable part of Bardic. 
So usually if, you, if you're trying to find a bardic, listen for the loudest noises and look for a fire. <laughs> and then you're usually going to find a bardic. Loud noise, fire. Or Wolfgang. You might find Wolfgang. Yes. Oh, also that. And then you ask for the spider story. See? But not the no pants story. I don't think I know the no pants story. No, that, that, you have to find Yazi for the Wolfgang no pants story. That's oh. correct. Okay. So a reminder to our audience, folks, we'd really like to get more of your live feed questions so we can get to them a little later in the show to find out what you want to know from, from Ayla. And so go ahead and send your questions in now and let's get those in. Now I have a confession to make. Because no one will believe now? it. Yes. I have won the Bardic competition at Magna Fair one year. I wanted you to sing a filk. And then I never did it again. <laughs> but, so, is Bardic the only schedule thing that goes on after Feast? So, it depends on the event. And a lot of times, for the record, Bardic is not scheduled. That's just kind of a thing that happens. Um, but scheduled things after the event, um, a lot of times there will be a post-revel, which may or may not involve bardic um or a revel i guess not even a post revel just a revel um and that's just a party after after feast after court people are hanging out there's usually uh some like munchies um that um uh, people will have set out you know crackers and cheese and that kind of thing as if you you know still hungry after feast um, and then dancing. Dancing is the other huge thing that a lot of times will be scheduled for later in the afternoon, which is another thing that I absolutely love in the SCA. And I am terrible at it. And I feel like that is really important to point out. It's something that I love and and I am absolutely terrible at at mundane dancing, I guess I should say, because I'm, I'm decent at SCA dancing um, because SCA dancing is just I can take the right number of steps in the right direction at the right time. And there is usually somebody at that dance who is willing to grab you by the hand and drag you through it. So dancing is so much fun. I cannot express how terrible I am usually at dancing, but how much I love SCA dancing. And there is video of me failing epically at dancing and still having a really great time doing it. So dance, dance if you can. So you could dance if you want to? You can leave your friends behind. What if your friends don't dance? Well, then they're no friends of mine. No. All right, then. All right. So we're actually, um, we've been actually rather uh, verbose in our answers. Um, and we're running actually a little, uh, a little long. Uh, would you be okay with running an extra 15 minutes or so longer than, uh, than we had planned? I'm good. Eric? Jess. All right. So we're going to drop down into um, the populist questions. We have a couple of, I believe we have a couple of uh, live feed questions. So we're going to do about 10 minutes of populist questions that we gathered up earlier. And I'm going to start that out with, do you have to know everyone's titles and get them exactly right? Or people will get mad at you at your first event. Uh, Absolutely not. Do not worry about knowing people's titles. Um, that's one of the things we, I feel like we're fortunate in, in the Shire that we started out in. We only had one peer, one person with a high level title in our local group. Um, and because that peer was the only one, she was just one of the rest of us. And so early on, we didn't have any kind of, 
what people sometimes call peer fear or tidal fear because we came up in such a small shire that everybody was so close to one another and, and it was just a big family. So um, Mistress Kiara was just another person. And so there was no fear of that. And the best way that I learned about titles and what I try to do when I bring newcomers to events is I'll find somebody that's wearing, maybe even they're the, you know, the king or queen. And I'll say, hey, this person is at their first event. Would you please talk to us about some of the things that they're wearing, that you're wearing? And so that's always a great thing. Like nobody cares if you're new and you don't get their title right, right? Walk up to somebody and be like, I like that necklace that you're wearing. Does it mean something? Or I like that outfit that you're wearing. Does anything about your outfit mean anything? And as Ulrich mentioned earlier, we like to talk. And we like to talk about ourselves. And so if you ask us questions about the cool things that we're wearing and the titles that we might have, we will be more than happy to explain those to you. But then most of the time we're going to tell you, well, I have the title of Baroness, but please just call me Ayla. Right. So people are, are very laid back as a general rule in the SCA. Awesome. So when I get to the event and I'm ready and I'm all enthusiastic, I can pay with a credit card, right? The uh, sell signal at most of our event sites is non-existent. So you need to plan on cash or check or register ahead of time if you would like to pay with your credit card. At least we're to the point now where we can actually pay ahead of time with a credit card. Yes, that's, that's, that, that's, that's new. A, I know. It's lovely. Yeah. All right. So I really haven't done this before. Um, and I don't really have anything to wear. Do I have to have garb to attend my first event? Or or what I had, do have, I found at the in one of the McCall's... Uh, patterns. Is that okay? Are either of those okay? So I mentioned being sort of like apprehensive about garb at my first event, but I learned later about this whole idea of the 10 foot rule and like trying to make an attempt. So an attempt at garb is fine. So if you've got a puffy shirt and some pants and some boots, awesome. Show up. If you like this thing, we're going to help you get stuff that makes you feel awesome. Maybe you don't have a puffy shirt and some pants and some boots. Show up anyway. Somebody there is going to help you out. So a lot of times at gate, they'll have something called gold key, which is loner garb. And it's always a good idea if you don't have something to wear, if you will email somebody on the event staff ahead of time and say, hey, I'm thinking about coming to this event. I don't have anything to wear do you have something I can borrow? And somebody is going to go out of their way to hook you up and make sure you have something that you can wear. Thank you. So what is feast gear that I keep hearing about? Is there something specific I have to bring to eat with? So it's a good idea to have a plate and a bowl, even if it's a paper plate and a paper bowl. But if you don't have a paper plate and a paper bowl, somebody is going to have something that you can borrow. And like our first time at an event, we showed up with um, with just the, the dishes out of our cabinet. Um, the first time after Spin and Halbera brought us their feast gear and we showed up to our own event, we just brought like a dish and a bowl from our cabinet and like threw it in a Walmart bag and... <laughs> showed up and and ate so uh you can you can kind of get as fancy or you can be as a uh, walmart special paper plate as you want to be so just for the record i i have eaten off of paper plates at events um i have eaten off of bamboo i have eaten off of some of the fanciest stuff um as well so uh right quick Back at one of our early events, and I want to say it was probably Kettering and, and mine's second event, um, the first one we ate feast at. We showed up at the feast uh, at, at the event, 
Um, we didn't didn't have a plate. We bought a mug and a plate at the event, but to eat with because I don't know if you guys know this or not. We've been to medieval times, and all they own, all you could get in medieval times in in the Middle Ages, you could get a spoon and you could have a knife, but they didn't have a fork. So all we had to eat with was knives. And I don't mean like we had a butter knife. We had daggers to eat with because <laughs> that's what we knew they ate with in medieval, in, in the middle ages. Um, so we got that really wrong, by the way, some really nice folks. I'm going to say it was uh, um, uh, Ian McPherson and, uh, and uh, Katriana uh, gave us a fork each. So that was very nice of them. We, we, we still appreciate that to this day. Um, but so I'm, I'm at gate and I'm, or I'm at troll um, and we're, we're paying to get on site. And I, why do I have to pay $5 more than that guy in front of me just to, to, to do this? Just because it, is there a newcomer tax or something? So members actually get a discount is the way to view it. So members have already paid a membership fee that helps sustain the organization. It's volunteer based, but there are costs that go into the organization. So I don't think of it as a as a fee. I think of it as members are getting a discount. And so it's an incentive to like, hey, if this is fun, come be a member, come be a part of it, not just in body, but in financial contribution as well. That's a really good way to look at that. So how do the king and queen get to be the crown? Is it just because he's really tall? You're looking at our Meridian Royals right now. Um, so crown for since the inception of the SCA has been determined by right of combat. And uh, we have we have started out being a very um, heavy fighting uh, armored combat focused organization. And so the crown are chosen through a tournament. Um, and in Meridies, that's <laughs> when we're not in COVID times. In Meridies, that's roughly every six months. We have some um, perpetual crowns right now. Bless them for being royals in a difficult time. Um, but usually in Meridies, there's a tournament. It's a heavy combat tournament. Um, there are uh, different requirements for entry based on who's crowned ahead of time. Um, but uh, you enter the tournament, you pick someone that if you were to win, you're going to reign with that person. And then if you win the tournament, you are usually prince and princess for roughly six months and kind of learn the ropes from the crown that is ahead of you. And then uh, they step down in some, uh, in a very Meridian tradition, in a weird and wacky and wild way. We like to kill our monarchs off in, in very theatrical ways, uh, which some other kingdoms think is very strange of us. Um, and then you've had your six month of practice as, uh, as uh, prince and princess, um, and then you step up as king and queen and serve your six month term. That's an excellent way. I, I love the fact that we that we kill off our, our monarchs because I, I can't see a, a world where right. we're Who just actually doing this. That, like, well, I've been doing this for six months. I'm just going to give up and let this other guy take over. No, I ain't going out unless they drag me. I mean, unless they're actually actually crowned during COVID, in which case, get me the, out of here. <laughs> All right. So I haven't been to an event yet, but I've been watching this Hound and Stag show for like, nine months now and these fine gentlemen and their guests drink a lot <laughs> do i have to drink to have fun at an event absolutely not there is no requirement to drink to have fun if drinking is fun for you you will have lots of opportunities to do so, but it is by no means the only way to have fun. There's all kinds of things, natural highs like uh, bardic and dancing and sitting around and just telling funny stories with people, even outside a bardic, wandering around watching the people who are drinking. That's always a fun pastime. Um, so yeah, drinking not required to have fun. 
Um, when my younger sisters were still underage, I used to bring them to SCA events all the time, and they had a blast without any alcohol at all. All right. So uh, we actually have one live feed question uh, before we get to the uh, before we get to the anything else section. Uh, what was that one, Katerina? Uh, do you remember your first magic moment? And that's from uh, Mistress Karishina. Oh, I think I have maybe two. Um, I mentioned already that MGT at Camp Discovery Meridian Grand Tournament was one of my early events. And that site is just surreal. It is so beautiful. And um, we were camping overnight. Actually, I think we were staying in a cabin because I don't think we even had a tent. Yeah, I know we didn't have a tent yet at that point. So we were staying in a cabin and we came outside that next morning. So we had gotten there late on Friday night. It was a long drive. Camp Discovery is in the middle of nowhere. So we had pretty much just gotten there and gone to bed and we woke up the next morning and walked out to see this site of the tournament field and the tournament field at MGT is set up in a square. People have set up their pavilions and because of the nature of MGT, people bring their best. And so they set up their banners. People have personalized silk banners with their heraldry on it. Um, and so these banners were set up and the sun was just rising and there is a small body of water at Camp Discovery. And there are these mountains that encircle it. And so there was this mist lying over the tournament field. And the sun was rising between the mountains in the mist. And there was a slight breeze that was just barely fluttering the banners. And for a moment, I was not in the modern times anymore. I was really and truly transported back to a different time. And it was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. And there are pictures out there of, of MGT in the mist. And if you can find those. Oh no. Well, um, so, uh, Ayla's having some, some technical difficulties. Um, so we're going to go into, I would go into the, um, the next question would be, all right, last chance. Is there anything else that you want to cover before we go? Um, so, uh, Eric, is there anything you want to cover before we go? You're muted. Muted. You're still muted. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to go over my, fir my first magic moment and hope that Ayla can come back and answer the anything else question. And it's, we'll, I'll keep it short. I was at a fool's war back when we fought at um, Tobiskoki in the bowl, the original bowl. Um, and uh, I had spent the evening talking to a friend, a female friend, and, and then I'd gotten distracted by some other things. And... Later, I saw a young lady walking along the beach, and she was literally shining in the moonlight. And I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen before in my life. Turns out it was the same person, and on November 1st, we'll have been married for 24 years. So, like, I, I don't think I, I'm going to get better than that. Wait, so, so you mar married Gwen on All Saints Day? Yes. Well, that's fitting. And luckily, Ayla has joined us, so she can answer the Yay, question. Welcome back. Yeah, sorry, uh, work computer. Um, you know, normally 7.30 p.m. is a perfectly reasonable time to install updates on a teacher's computer. But, you know, when you're in the middle of a live show, it's less than ideal. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm back. Perfectly okay. All right. So we're to the, uh, we're, we're to the wrap up portion of the show before we get to the, to the Zoom at the end. But uh, this is your last chance to cover anything that 
we haven't covered anything that we missed, anything that you'd like to go over. And I realize there's still a, a, a literal ton of things that we could cover about our first event, but is there any highlight you want to hit? Uh, well, I was just going to uh, invite anybody for whom um, sailing on a Viking ship sounds like an awesome idea um, that I got so addicted to the fear Draca that my husband and I actually bought our own replica Viking ship. It's slightly smaller and less impressive than the fear Draca, but Meridies now has her own Viking ship called um, the fear beefer. And uh, she is in the process of having some upgrades completed, but should be uh, sailing on a lake near you, hopefully sometime fall 2021, latest spring 2022. So um, depending on what things are looking like with COVID, there is a Facebook page. And uh, we would love to have anybody. Oh, look at our amazing team, our tech team is really the bomb. All right. So yes, there is a, there's a Facebook group, the, the Furby for Solquist. And um, if you think that sailing on a Viking ship sounds like the most amazing thing ever, which it is, let me just tell you, uh, please, please, please join us. And it's partly selfish. Uh, the the people who go on the Fear Draca like to uh, tease me that uh, I really, it's not that I like to have my friends on the boat. It's that I need my friends to row so that I can go on the boat. Um, so the same is true with the, with the Fear Beefer. I, I need you to get on my boat so that I can go on my boat. So please come on my boat with me. It's a symbiotic relationship. It really is. I row too. I promise. I will row the whole time. You're still yes, This is the point in the show. Ah, ha, ha, where we do shout out. And I'm probably going to steal Ulrich's shout out because I want to do the shout out to the Between Two Peers for an entire year of putting forth really quality shows that really helped a lot of people stay connected to the society in a time when maybe it wasn't that easy to feel that way. And so thanks for all that they did. And they sort of blazed a trail for a lot of other people who did a lot of other things, including us. So thanks so much. Ayla, do you have any shows that you watched or any anything? It doesn't have to be even be virtual SCA. It can just be anything that's going on in the kingdom or in the SCA that you want to throw some love to. Um, well, I'm just going to shout out my husband for the drink that he made me tonight. Um, those of you that know Bog Chocolate out there are not newcomer listeners. Know that in Bog Chocolate, uh, ice is the mixer. And so my first serving of Bog Chocolate had ice in it. But my refill of bog chocolate did not have ice in it. So thanks, Gwydion. Shout out to Gwydion. I love you, Gwyd. That was awesome. Um, so Eric did steal a bit of my thunder there for my shout out. So um, I will give personal shout outs to uh, um, Mistress, uh, Mistress Tulia, Baroness Tulia, and uh, Duchess Helga for hosting the shows. But they also had an amazing, like, much like us, they had an, an amazing crew, um, uh, Lord Kikuchi, uh, Baby Ninja, um, for them, uh, and Lord Kikuchi for us uh, was also uh, one of their their tech people. They have the tech technomancer uh, whose name I can't remember, um, Tamara Glover, who was their uh, was their version of our mystery, of our Graf and Katarina, who aligned up all of their their questions. They had a, a super crew that did a lot of great things. And uh, I got to know a lot of them, and I really appreciate that. But for the still active shows that are going on, I want to throw some love to the Coach's Corner, um, which happens every Friday night uh, on the Known World SCA Fighter Practice page. And uh, Duke Bronos and Duke Sean and Duke Alanon and Duke, 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 Duke Count do a bunch of stuff uh, over there that are uh, super helpful to fighters, and we really appreciate them. All right, so now to our thanks. We'd like to thank you, Baroness Ayla, for joining us, uh, being here with us, and, and sharing some some knowledge. Uh, of course, our support crew, Jessica, Adriana, Katerina, Kikuchi, and uh, Margaret. Uh, and most importantly to you, our audience, for tuning in every whenever we decide to throw, throw a show 
and being here for us. Otherwise, it's just Eric and I talking to our crew and our guest, and 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 then no one cares. So thank you so much for being being here and listening to us blather on for an hour and a half or a little extra. We'll be back at some point in the not too distant future. So look for announcements on the Facebook group. And as always, all shows are 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. So if you're watching the replay on YouTube or watching it live on YouTube for that matter, or watching it on Facebook. So on YouTube, like and subscribe up here um, or down here, down here. Yeah, down here. Like and subscribe down here. Smash that notification button uh, on Facebook. Like and follow up here. Um, and uh, we uh, hope to see you again on that on that line. Finally, if you're watching live, give us about five minutes for a break. Then feel free to join us on Zoom for the after show where we might discuss stories about literally anything but being blue at the end of an event. We don't have the liability insurance to cover that here. <laughs> Watch the live feed comments on Facebook for the link. We'll hang out and chat for about half an hour after the show. Graf and Katarina will kindly post it now. All right. Wait, wait. One last thing. I know when we said a final, but one last, last thing. I don't understand how this timeline works, but we have merch. Go to the link on your screen, www.hound-and-stag.com and buy some merch. It pays for our StreamYard uh, subscription. It pays for um, some nice, a nice headset for uh, our earpiece for, or I'm sorry, the mic for, for Eric, things like that to keep this up, to, up and running. We don't get, we don't make anything personally from it. Um, but check it out. See if there's something you like. I hear the, the leggings are, are pretty sweet. And never forget fear of beaver is coming to your lake soon. <laughs> not, not, not fear, fear beaver. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. And if I die in battle, tomorrow I'll be home. Though it's 70 days march to there from Rome. But a soul travels swiftly on the night wind. And if I die in battle, I'll be home again.